Hi everyone, and welcome to PlatformCon 2024. Thank you for joining our session. Ben and I will be talking about how to bridge the gap between local and remote environments in your platform. In our talk, we'll discuss the problem space and walk you through what we believe are the most common issues and pitfalls when dealing with multiple environments and platforms, and what we mean when we talk about a gap between those. Uh, we'll then go on to introduce SCORE, an open source workload specification that essentially aims to close this gap between environments and um, with that hopes to provide a smooth developer experience from local to production. And while SCORE presents a, a concrete solution that we'll be discussing today, do I want to highlight that we're also equally interested in um, discussing the approach taken here. So this means talking about questions such as um, how to effectively reduce cognitive load for developers and how to find the right level of, of abstraction here, for example. These are all important discussions to have when talking or thinking about how to build mature platforms at scale. And these are also conversations that we uh, try to push within the SCORE uh, open source community. And yeah, we'd just be excited to get your feedback on, on these questions as well. Um, that being said, let's dive right in, uh, back to the actual question, how to bridge the gap between local and remote environments in your platform. What do we actually mean by that? I prepared a really simple example use case just to make sure we're aligned on the problem space here. So imagining you're a developer uh, working with a workload, so a service of yours that has a dependency on a database. Now, when talking about the, the gap between local and remote, uh, we're essentially talking about this workload being developed locally on your local machine and then eventually being promoted to a local development environment and uh, then landing on production, hopefully. Um, locally, teams often use rather lightweight tooling such as Docker Compose, meaning uh, they're working with Docker Compose files and remotely making use of probably more sophisticated container orchestration tooling like Kubernetes, and therefore working with manifest files or potentially a, a tool such as Helm or, or Customize, depending on your team's preference. Now, moving from left to right and actually bridging this gap can be quite challenging. Um, the, the fact that each of these environments that we're working with run on different platforms means that developers are also exposed to different configuration rules. Um, we're seeing it here. First, you're working with the Docker Compose file and then suddenly with manifests that of course also require uh, different levels of expertise. And the main question here really is, how do you make sure that changes are reflected appropriately? Um, so if you update your workload locally, how do you make sure that is translated in your Helm chart, for example, or in your manifest? And that question, of course, is also valid for any resource dependencies. So looking at the database here, you might be working with a Postgres image locally that has local configuration, but then remotely, you might be working again with a Helm chart, a set of manifests or an operator CRD, for example. So we've talked to a lot of teams about this issue and um, the most common pain points here seem to be uh, what I mentioned before, configuration inconsistencies, so different config rules, construct values between local and remote environments increase the risk of errors. So essentially having to move from a platform such as Docker to another platform such as Kubernetes um, sometimes requires manual work, uh, sometimes requires uh, someone with expertise jumping in and might, if there's an error, might uh, essentially resolve in, um, result in your workload not running as intended. Um, the next thing is high cognitive load. Um, of course, yeah, specialized tech and tools demand expertise knowledge, um, usually specifically operational knowledge, and developers being exposed to this can increase their cognitive load, um, especially if they're not familiar with tooling in the Kubernetes ecosystem, for example. And then of course also context switching. Um, so essentially keeping all of these platforms and environment specific configurations in sync uh, requires you to shift forth and back uh, a lot, essentially um, making it hard to maintain focus. So just a quick rundown of the problem space we're looking at with SCORE. And um, before we look at how SCORE aims to solve this, um, Ben will provide a quick demo walkthrough 
um, do I just want to give a quick overview of the philosophy and approach, uh, approach that SCORE is taking here. So yeah, as it says here on a very high level, SCORE aims to ensure consistent configuration across environments, allowing developers to focus on writing code rather than dealing with infrastructure concerns. And um, how this works, again, on a very high level, um, the idea is that you have your SCORE specification that is essentially a file that describes your workload's runtime requirements. Um, you have one file per workload, so um, that is essentially your single source of truth on how to run a workload, and that is um, composed in a declarative and platform agnostic way, meaning uh, it's very developer friendly, allowing the developer to easily describe what their workload needs to run. Now, this score specification can be run against a score implementation. On the graphic here, we have our two example reference implementations, um, score compose and score Kubernetes. Uh, these are both CLIs that take in the score specification and then um, essentially transform it into the desired um, platform configuration file. And the idea here is that you have your score file and that same score file can be executed against various uh, implementations. Um, we have two here, but based on your use case um, and the platform setup you're working with, um, it could be various other targets um, that you're transforming the score file into. So just a quick overview of uh, how score works. Quickly going back to the pain points we discussed before, um, how does this reduce configuration inconsistencies? So first of all, now configuration, of course, is automated, kind of uh, generated in a one directional manner, um, taken care of by the score implementation, making any manual intervention uh, redundant and therefore reducing the risk of um, any errors that could occur. Um, in terms of high cognitive load, we're kind of moving the, the cognitive load in terms of the expertise that is required to actually work with uh, individual platforms into the implementation. So that is also all kind of abstracted away. And in terms of context switching, what we talked about before, um, you're of course still exposed to these platforms. So SCORE doesn't want to replace them in any way, but more so sits on top of them. Um, meaning there might still be some context switching required, but uh, the idea here is that you have, as a developer, a unified interface and um, a single source of truth for your workloads configuration. And uh, with that, I would hand over to Ben, who is going to quickly show us how all of this looks in practice uh, with our two reference implementations. Thank you, Susa. Let's look at how SCORE can be used to deploy the same application with resource dependencies into two different runtimes without changing the workload specification at all. We'll use the two reference implementations of SCORE here. SCORE Compose to simulate a local development environment based on Docker or Podman, and SCORE Kubernetes to deploy to a real Kubernetes environment, which might even be production for this application. Our demo app today is an image gallery that consists of two microservices. An image service, which stores data in a Postgres database and serves HTML pages to the user. And a thumbnail service, which listens on a RabbitMQ key and generates thumbnails for each image. The image service will, will send events on this key to, to request thumbnails. Each microservice has a separate score file and its own repo, since they are developed, tested, and deployed separately. But here we'll focus on deploying both services into the same target environment with shared resources to communicate between them. Let's look at that score file for the image service. It starts with a metadata header, including the workload name. Then we have a container section with our Docker image and some environment variables. You'll see we're passing the Postgres and RabbitMQ uh, access credentials into those environment variables. And those are outputs from our resource dependencies further down. We can trust the SCORE implementation to securely handle any sensitive inputs, like secrets, in whichever implementation makes sense for the, the runtime. The resource requests and readiness probes should look familiar to anyone that's used Kubernetes or similar services. Then we have a service section, which indicates that this workload exposes a service port, in this case, the HTTP port. Finally, at the bottom, the resources section is where we declare our abstract dependencies. The types indicate the interface or behavior we expect out of this resource. 
So we have a Postgres database, our RabbitMQ queue, and some environment-specific DNS names and routes to ensure that requests to our generated DNS name end up on our workload service port. Notice that that AMQP queue has an ID, which allows us to share it across multiple workloads here. So let's get that running. We'll start with score compose in our terminal. We run score compose init to set up an empty score compose project. We can then generate the output compose manifests by calling the generate command. The logs indicate which resources have been provisioned and any special comments. For example, this here has output the access instructions for the temporary Postgres database, should we need it, as well as the domain name and a link to access it in the browser. Now we run docker compose up to start everything. Notice that it's, it's generated more than just our workload here. We have our Postgres and RabbitMQ, along with utility containers for routing. Persistent volumes here ensure that we can restart things during development without losing data. We can view our app in the web browser by going to that generated host name. We're taking advantage of localhost routing on, on Unix here. If we upload an image or two, notice that no thumbnail appears yet. And that's because we didn't add that thumbnail service we spoke about. So let's switch back to the terminal and stop everything. Um, and now we can pull in the score file for the thumbnail service from its repository, and we'll add it in our existing project. Opening that score file, we can see it's much shorter, but very similar. The same AMQP connection string uh, and the same RabbitMQ resource dependency. We're using the same shared ID there to ensure that we are requesting the same exchange. And this means that the connection string will be the same too. Score Compose has a state directory, which ensures that any generated state, such as passwords, usernames, random IDs, are persisted and shared so that we can call generate again and keep the same randomized data. So this time, we just add the thumbnail service to the existing project. We'll call Docker Compose up again, and we can see our thumb, and if we go to our web browser and upload more images again, we can see that thumbnails are generated. So as a developer, I can work on this image service and get some higher fidelity local testing or integration testing, or even do this in my CI pipeline with Docker Compose. So you may ask, what are the supported resource types? You saw Postgres and RabbitMQ, where did those come from? So this all comes down to which uh, provisioner files exist in the score compose state directory. In this case, when we ran init, it provided some default provisioners, uh, but these can be extended or overridden as desired to support whatever kinds of resources your platform provides. See here in the score compose docs, you can see there are different kinds of databases, different kinds of storage, and it's easy to extend and modify these. So let's look at that next step in our development cycle, deploying to a Kubernetes environment with scorecates. So we initialize scorecates in the same way with scorecates in it. But now, because my Kubernetes environment already has a persistent Postgres and RabbitMQ installed, I'm going to override the default provisioners that come with scorecates with a custom provisioner file that my platform team, me, has provided for this cluster, and, and that returns access credentials for that, uh, those real persistent Postgres and RabbitMQ, as well as a custom DNS name for the service. So now calling generate produces a manifest YAML file that we can apply with kubectl. When applying it, you'll see that we've got multiple deployments here for our two services. We've got ingress routes, TLS certificates, and the like. Um, and all of this will represent the running manifests our application needs. Now we can contact Kubernetes to make sure that the application is, is ready for traffic and open it in our web browser. Now we can upload some images and you'll see that they're generated just like it did in Docker Compose. So we're running exactly the same service, this time in a completely different runtime, Kubernetes, 
without modifying the score file or changing how workload is specified. As a developer, I didn't need to know about how to write Kubernetes manifests or compose specifications, and my platform team could provide a common set of recipes for connecting to any existing resources or provisioning new and custom ones that my applications need. I hope this serves as a, a useful demo today of using the score spec as a developer and seeing how using multiple score implementations and multiple score files can be used for local development, testing, and even deployment. We've also seen how score implementations can provide resource provisioning and how this can be configured in an environment specific way. So I hope this inspires folks to check out SCORE. Uh, besides the two reference implementations, we'd love to see contributions of new, of new SCORE implement, implementations targeting other runtimes such as AWS Fargate, Google Cloud Run, Fly.io, and any new resource provisioners that folks would find useful. So check out the SCORE project on GitHub, read the docs, join our Slack community to get involved, and we'd like to see what people do with it. Thanks.